So when am I going to go vegan? Uh, this video is a video which I, I guess it's not really been requested exactly, but it's kind of just been in the background because um, uh, I, it feels like quite a few of my subscribers, I just wrote that I don't need to be wearing headphones. Uh, it seems like quite a few of my subscribers are vegan. And also then, of course, I made a video where I used veganism as an example of how uh, shock kind of not shock humor, uh, like shock tactics showing like disgusting images um, doesn't necessarily mean an idea is wrong. So somebody I was responding to was saying, well, you know, uh, pro-lifers show pictures of like dead, cut up, mutilated babies to try and show why abortion is wrong. And, uh, uh, you know, gender critical activists show pictures of, um, you know, mutilated bodies as a result of various kind of uh, surgeries that are given to trans identified people to try and show why these surgeries are wrong. Therefore, they're both using shock tactics to try and argue their case. Therefore, in both cases, their case must be wrong. And I pointed out, well, likewise, vegans use all sorts of shocking tactics to try and show you stuff that makes you uncomfortable and just hit you at a visceral level. And yet, vegans are right. Uh, that's the point I made. And uh, obviously, that kind of created the question, well, if I'm saying vegans are right, does that mean I'm going to become a vegan? Am I a vegan? Well, I'm not, because I think I said at the time I wasn't. Um, but I should say that this is a very complicated question. And I have more notes on this topic than I've had on any other topic I've spoken about on this channel. Uh, I have, I'm scrolling over three whole pages of notes. And uh, basically, so, you know, that probably doesn't mean much to you. But for example, in my uh, last video uploaded to this channel, I had less than one whole page. Now, that doesn't mean this video is going to be three times longer. It just means because, you know, I might blast through the points individually. For example, the notes I had on the previous one, uh, it was stuff where I could kind of like talk about one specific thing and then just uh, talk about it for a while, knowing what it is I wanted to say about the thing. In this case, what it does show that I have so many notes is that for every single thing I want to talk about, I had like lots of things I wanted to write down to make sure I organized my points correctly. So I guess it, you know, maybe speaks to more the kind of complexity of the argument. It, it wasn't something I felt like I could just kind of write down one general note and I was like, no, I have to write down this note and then the specific thing I want to mention. So there we go. I hope that by the end of this video, you will not feel that I have left any stone unturned. And uh, yeah, this will decidedly uh, have been a, a pretty comprehensive video on the question of, am I going to become vegan? And what more generally are my opinions on veganism? So let's just first of all say the thing which I've already said before, which is that veganism is moral. It is more moral than not being vegan. It is the right thing to do. And if you are vegan, well done. I'm very proud of you. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of pretty simple and it was just worth saying unambiguously. Veganism is moral. In fact, it's so obviously moral that I don't actually need to really kind of go into why it's moral. Um, I will say, of course, that uh, the, the main benefits of it, just for the record, are uh, animal welfare, of course, that the animals uh, right now are being treated pretty rubbish and that therefore, if you're a vegan, you're not participating in that. And of course, if everybody was vegan, it wouldn't happen. Uh, there's also, of course, the environmental concern, uh, the fact that the planet is being destroyed. And a huge part of that is the deforestation uh, being you know, used to kind of um, make sure there's enough room to have all of these animals grazing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and finally, of course, there's the food security issue. People, human beings, you know, obviously we can be concerned about the animals, but human beings uh, are starving. And one of the things which would make food even more abundant would be if rather than growing food to feed, you know, cows so we can kill the cows, we just grew food to feed people. Growing food is much more uh, kind of economically efficient, I suppose, than growing food for your food. So yeah, those are the obvious ways in which veganism is the morally superior position. Uh, animals don't suffer, the environment doesn't suffer, and you can feed people, which, you know, is kind of meeting a pretty basic human right. So with that said, it's, it's always shocking to me 
how few people even consider the reality that veganism is clearly morally superior. Because as I've said before, my stance on it is, no, yeah, I've, I'm very much aware of that. Of course, veganism is the morally superior thing. Um, and it's always surprising to me how often I see people who uh, not only seem to have not considered that veganism is morally superior, but are offended at the suggestion it even is. But yeah, certainly like I've spoken to uh, otherwise intelligent, thoughtful people and, uh, you know, mentioned how like, well, obviously yeah, veganism is the correct decision. I'm like, oh yeah, to be honest, I've never really thought about it. It's just, I, I don't understand how somebody could have never thought about it. Um, I will, the thing is, the other thing I should point out is like, there are people who will try to argue that eating meat or, you know, let's say not being vegan is morally defensible. Um, I remember on uh, the bad philosophy subreddit, which is kind of dead now and was always kind of a bit pretentious and annoying, but there was this thing where um, they hated on the bad philosophy subreddit anybody who tried to make an ethical defense for eating meat. It was one of the things that just really they hated. And the reason they hated it is because it was always terrible. It wasn't because like the thing is, it wasn't because like they didn't like how people were challenging their worldview or something like that. No, they didn't like it because it was always such a terrible, terrible um, argument. And of course, yeah, every single argument for how it's actually ethically defensible to, uh, you know, well, to eat meat, uh, it, it just does kind of fall flat. Um, I will just give a shout out to one argument I think is particularly stupid, which is the kind of a identity politics nonsense around like indigenous co cultures, like the idea that um, being vegan is like a white person thing and like therefore it's bad. And like, I just, I just genuinely just can't with it. It's just so annoying. Um, obviously, uh, you know, being black doesn't, you know, I don't care if like, your ancient ancestors and like your culture or whatever else um, has, you know, and maybe even your particular economic condition makes it so it's like, oh, it's normalized for you to eat meat. Um, that's irrelevant if you are currently in a situation where you can stop eating meat. Um, and of course, most people who are in a position where they can be arguing on the internet about whether or not it's okay to eat meat are in a position where they could, of course, stop eating meat. And I suppose actually I should also give a shout out, you know, on the subject of like, you know, if you're in a situation where you can stop eating meat, all the kind of silly, um, uh, like hypothetical scenarios about like if you're on a desert island and all that kind of stuff, but but you're not on a desert island. So yeah, that's the issue. Like obviously, I don't really need to stress this point now much. All of the arguments against being vegan are wrong. So let's point out the obvious point: why I'm the least likely person in the world to become vegan. Because the thing is, uh. The fact that most people haven't even thought about whether or not veganism is immoral is significant. Like what I just said there is that the majority, the majority of people seem to not hold to the position I hold to, which is that veganism is clearly the right decision to make. It's clearly the most ethical decision to make. Of course you should be vegan. Um, and the fact is that most people don't agree with that. And that means that the majority of people actually all you need to do is convince them of that fact. And that should be a fact which is quite easy to convince people of. Um, you know, to convince people that uh, veganism is the ethically correct decision. And at that point, you know, that should be the significant hurdle overcome. You know, the majority of people, you kind of get the impression the reason they're not vegan is because they think not being vegan is okay. You know, that that's why they give these terrible defense. Well, that's why either one, they haven't even thought about whether being vegan is the more moral decision, or two, they give like terrible, terrible arguments for why being vegan isn't the more ethical decision. And the logical conclusion there is that actually they know that if it was shown that veganism is the more ethical decision, they would feel an obligation to become vegan. Um, and obviously lots of people make fun of veganism. Lots of people hate vegans. Uh, and it's clearly because they're insecure about the fact that eating meat is obviously immoral. They don't want to confront the reality that eating meat is immoral. And that speaks to the fact that if they were forced to confront that reality, it might um, ob create some kind of obligation for them. And to me, that's, that's very obvious um, that people who currently eat meat, who do not acknowledge the ethical superiority of veganism are 
refusing to acknowledge the ethical superiority of veganism because if they did, they feel they would therefore be obligated to stop eating meat. And they don't want to stop eating meat, so they don't want to acknowledge it. But obviously that means that in theory, it should be quite easy to get those people to stop eating meat. You know, the number of people who are in my specific situation of already acknowledging that veganism is the morally superior position, but still eat meat, is actually relatively few. And it's kind of, it kind of seems to me like actually maybe it's relatively few because not many people would do that. It seems like most people want to believe that they are morally, you know, doing the right thing most of the time and therefore to consistently uh, engage in a kind of uh, dietary decision which is ethically indefensible would not be something they could do and therefore you might be able to convince them. Uh, now I, on the other hand, have often jokingly said uh, that I, I don't mind vegans, uh, I just don't like those vegans who don't think they're morally superior to everybody else. Um, and obviously, yeah, the joke there is it's, it's an inversion of the typical refrain. You know, lots of other people will be like, oh, you know, vegans are fine, but I just don't like vegans who like rub in your face or all that kind of stuff. I'm like, you know, no, yeah, if you're a vegan, do that. Like, have fun. Genuinely, like, I don't, yeah, I, I would expect vegans to make a point about how morally superior they are. That would be what I would anticipate. And to be honest, I find it confusing that any vegan wouldn't do all of that. Um, I remember this one time, there was this YouTuber, uh, I believe the YouTube was called K6 Faces, uh, and they were big for a while, kind of. Um, but yeah, I haven't really seen them recently. And um, they did this like really, really uh, sincere video. Like it was very kind of self-serious. And I was like, I admire vegans, but I think that any vegan who thinks they're a better person than somebody who eats meat has a lot of growing up to do. And they're like very serious about it. It was clear like that some vegan had like, attack them for eating meat and they'd got really triggered by it uh, and it was kind of funny but um it's also a bit like kind of incoherent because why do you admire vegans i kind of feel like yeah a lot of the time people who uh are angry at like vegans for thinking being being, being vegan is ethically superior have a lot of cognitive dissonance because of course being vegan is ethically superior so if it's ethically superior and you're not doing it i feel like people motivate out of lots of cognitive dissonance where they'll somehow say well you admire people being being vegan implying that you think it's like the correct thing to be doing you admire that decision and yet when a vegan tells you that making that correct decision makes them a better person you get triggered by that and i don't really understand how that makes sense it's like well if someone's doing something better than you i mean if there's one thing we've established recently it's i'm uh, perhaps controversially uh, comfortable referring to other people as better than other people you know that some people are being better than other people but um yeah i just think it's kind of incoherent um but yeah let's actually just address the the point in case you hadn't kind of put two and two together i'm obviously like the least likely person to become vegan because i've already decided that eating meat is immoral and being vegan would be superior uh, there's no doubt in my mind that being vegan would make me a more moral person. Which means that vegans now have the much more difficult task of uh, convincing me to be moral. Convincing me that eating meat is immoral would be super easy. Like, that's not a hard thing to do at all. Um, although, I mean, again, it's not a hard thing because I'm a rational person who actually engages with logical arguments, uh, unlike the majority of meat eaters. Um, but you have this really awkward challenge now which is, I agree with you, but I still eat meat. You know, like I already admit it's an immoral thing to do, but I still do it. Um, and yeah, you have this like huge, gigantic challenge of convincing me to do what I know is right, which is difficult because there's not really like, there's not a, um, a, a moral argument for that. I mean, this is kind of the whole issue of like um, objective morality kind of more generally. I mean, it's not really about objective morality, but kind of the issue of like moral obligation. You can convince somebody that something is the right thing to do, but what argument can you give somebody for why they should do the right thing? 
And of course, actually, a lot of the time, the arguments given for why somebody should do a moral thing are often like very self-interested arguments. So you'd say like, well, you shouldn't murder people because you wouldn't want to live in a society where people murder other people. You shouldn't steal because you wouldn't want to live in a society where people just steal things from people without asking. The issue here, of course, is that that doesn't really work here. There is no self-interested argument for being a vegan. So you have this uh, pretty yeah substantial challenge of convincing me that I should do the moral thing. And that's a hard thing to do. It's pretty hard to be confronted with somebody who's like, yep, that would be the more moral thing to do, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, and I think, you know, while, of course, convincing people to become vegan in general is quite a challenge, I think this is probably more unique of a challenge because, again, convincing somebody that eating meat is immoral should be easy. That's not what you have to do if you want to make me be vegan. You have to convince me that veganism being more moral should motivate some kind of response from me. And at this point, I need to point out that vegans really don't help themselves in this regard by stressing how much they don't like animal products. And what I mean by that is not don't like it morally, I mean don't like it according to their own preferences. Because I look in a lot of vegan spaces, you know, um, as somebody who can agree with like what vegans are saying, it's very easy for me to participate in vegan discussions. It's actually kind of hilariously easy. Like I can sit there and agree that all of these things are immoral. Um, there's, yeah, there's no issue there. There's no cognitive dissonance. There's no even frankly dishonesty there. I'm agreeing all of these things are immoral. That's all there is to it. And because of that, yeah, I get myself involved in quite a few vegan discussions. And something I've noticed, so here's the thing, what that has done is further convince me that I'm very unlikely to ever become vegan myself, because I notice vegans say often um, that, that even when they weren't vegan, they already thought like eating meat was gross. Or something I see a lot is eating eggs was gross. They're like, oh, even when I wasn't a vegan, I always thought like eating eggs was disgusting. Um, and I feel like this is kind of like one of those, it's almost like a weird sort of purity thing where it's like, you know, if you want to show how great of a vegan you are, you say, like, oh, yeah, even when I wasn't a vegan, I still thought all of these animal products and all that stuff um, was disgusting. But the thing is, it actually ends up, from my perspective, being very kind of counterproductive because I then find myself wondering, well, actually, are vegans even more uh, or even that much more moral than me? Because what they're kind of inadvertently communicating to me is that um, vegans all don't like animal products. Like one of the things that's very likely to make you a vegan is thinking eggs are gross, thinking meat is disgusting, not enjoying these things, which communicates to me that, well, it's unrealistic to imagine that I ever would become vegan because I love eggs. I love meat. I love animal products. I really enjoy them. You know, I'm not going to be one of those people on the vegan forum talking about how, yeah, even when I was, even when I wasn't vegan, I still thought eggs were gross. No, I loved eggs. So I'm sat there when I sit there reading vegans saying, oh yeah, even when I wasn't a vegan, I thought eggs were gross. I'm like, okay, that sounds like it's nothing that I wouldn't, uh, that sounds like nothing like anything I would ever say. And obviously, therefore, the implication is if this is what a lot of vegans are saying, it's unlikely I will ever be a vegan. You know, I'm not going to be a vegan if something which all vegans are saying is something which I would never say. You know, it kind of just makes sense. If every single vegan is going to say, oh, I just thought that animal products were disgusting even before I ever became vegan, I'm be like, well, in that case, I think that animal products aren't disgusting, so I'm probably not going to end up just being the one vegan who really loved animal products. Um, and uh, I also think, you know, that similar to this, uh, vegans will often try to argue that people don't really like meat because uh, look at all the seasoning and all of the sauces and all the stuff they put on meat um, to to like make it taste good, to flavor it, to make it uh, you know yummy. Uh, John Sakars, one of my favorite YouTubers, um, has like a joke about that. He's like, I love meat. Could you pass the barbecue sauce, garlic butter, um, you know, whatever else, relish? I don't know. Um, but uh, mushrooms. Here's the thing, though. Um, that is actually true. Um, you know, it's true a lot of the time that people will eat meat, but then cover it in stuff, which, you know, basically means that they're not enjoying the delicious flavor of meat. However, it's also worth noting that a lot of the time, this isn't true. Uh, steak with just salt to enhance the flavor, that's it, just salt. No other, no other stuff, just, just salt to kind of complement the flavors. 
is delicious. Uh, a, a big slab of like, I don't know, uh, paper covered in salt wouldn't be tasty, but steak covered in salt is delicious. I love it. It's so tasty. Um, you know, uh, bread simply with just plain butter is delicious. And it's not the bread. It's not just the bread, at least. It's the butter. And, you know, like, things tasting like butter. You know, like, people have um, buttered noodles, and it's good. Uh, the humble fried egg or, or dipping egg, aka, like, boiled egg, is delicious. You know, I love getting a boiled egg and just dunking, dunking my soldiers in there. And just, mmm, it's so good. It's so tasty. Again, obviously, I'll put some salt and pepper on it. That's not, like, a particularly, you know, sure... Obviously, you might want to add just some slight flavor enhancers, but this is not what is often claimed, which is that people don't really like meat at all and can only eat meat when it's covered in all of these, you know, things that completely uh, cover the flavor. Um, no, the reality is that even before getting into all of these different fancy flavorings, meat products are still delicious on their own. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes obviously, you know, I might like something aromatic with my meat, like garlic or rosemary or whatever else, but it's kind of ridiculous to suggest that I'm not still fundamentally actually enjoying the meat. It's ridiculous to suggest that just because I have um, garlic and rosemary and olive oil with like a, a, a leg of lamb, that therefore I would enjoy anything else just as much as long as it had garlic and olive oil and rosemary with it. No, I love the flavor of lamb. And to be honest, yeah, uh, I would happily eat the lamb without the garlic and the rosemary and the olive oil. Uh, the garlic and the rosemary and the olive oil make it nicer, but uh, obviously, and you should, I mean, I should also point out the obvious thing, which is that this applies to vegetables too. Um, I could eat like a vegetable on its own, of course. I could also eat a piece of meat completely on its own. Um, but Obviously, I would prefer to have some kind of flavoring with my vegetables. I would prefer to have some kind of flavoring with my meat. Um, the reality is that, yeah, obviously, um, vegans, I think, are completely wrong in arguing that people just don't like meat, really, and every single person just always has all of these sauces and flavorings with their meat. Um, and again, the issue is that by trying to argue that uh, people don't really like meat, vegans are making it seem much more apparent that actually vegans just like meat less, right? Uh, which is a very significant thing because obviously the whole argument for veganism should be from kind of a, a well, especially if you wanted to convince me, should be, well, yeah, okay, but we're only motivated by the morality aspect. The only thing motivating us is that uh, it's more moral to be vegan, so that's why we're vegan. And that might actually, you know, uh, bring about a sense of like a uh, moral obligation in me. But that's not what I see from vegans. Instead, I see vegans say, ah, nobody likes meat, really. Meat's terrible. Meat's disgusting. Meat's the worst thing ever. Meat's gross. Nobody really likes meat. You know, everybody only eats steak when they can cover it in an inch of barbecue sauce. Nobody's ever sat down and just enjoyed um, steak with salt and just thought it was delicious. That's never happened. Nobody's ever sat down with just a fried egg and some bread and thought it was delicious. These things just don't happen because people don't really like meat. And I'm left thinking, well, that's not true. I do all of, all of those things. I love meat. I love eggs. It's really tasty. It's mmm. And I mean, that's not even, I haven't even mentioned cheese. Goodness me, are these delicious foodstuffs? Um, and vegans, by trying to argue like, that nobody really likes this are only indicating what, you know, I guess they know for certain, which is that they don't like these animal products. And at that point, you kind of have to, like, wonder, are they really that morally superior? Now, again, this is kind of like a bit of a, a messy area morally. The obvious argument you could make is that, well, actually, if I didn't like animal products, it would be very easy for me to avoid animal products. I wouldn't be more moral. I would simply like animal products less. You know, if I didn't like eggs as much as I like, or as much as I do, then I could easily stop eating eggs. But that wouldn't really be because I was more moral. It would just be because I like eggs less. Now, you could argue, obviously, well, you know, obviously, by that logic, is somebody who doesn't murder more moral than somebody who does murder? if the person who doesn't murder just doesn't want to murder. 
you know, does does wanting something make it less moral when you do that or less immoral when you do that thing? And you know, obviously, I can see how that's a bit of a, a kind of weird thing to say. Uh, I mean, there are examples genuinely of where I would say the reality is that I don't exactly think I'm more moral than somebody who does an immoral thing. I just don't want to do that thing. There's like some things which immoral people might do, which I think are really gross and like not appealing to me at all, you know? Um, and in some sense, I would say, am I more moral than those people? Or do I just not want to do it because it doesn't meet my preferences? And that's sometimes how I feel about vegans, you know, like vegans act as if they're more moral than meat eaters. But then with the way they talk about animal products, they betray the fact that they just don't like animal products. They just don't like meat and eggs and dairy. It's not something they enjoy. And, you know, maybe they enjoy it a little bit, but they clearly, you know, with their language indicate they don't enjoy it that much. And yeah, sometimes they'll even say like, oh, eggs were disgusting to me before I was a vegan. And my conclusion there is, okay, so actually it's not really about morality, it's just about you don't like them as much as I do. Um, so yeah, I think this is a uh, particularly you know bad and counterproductive vegan tactic, which very much you know kind of inclines me to be more entrenched in my position that if I don't uh, feel like giving up meat, it's not really because of a moral failing, it's just because unlike apparently the vast majority of vegans, I actually enjoy meat. I think it's tasty. I do want to just briefly touch on some more vegan tactics just very quickly, because it's worth noting, like I say, I mean, I'm, I've argued here that vegans should be able to achieve results. You know, they have like the correctness on their side. They have facts on their side. You would think they would be able to kind of do better. Um, and I do think the big limitation for vegans is that most people are deeply unwilling to uh, assess and recognize their own moral failings. I mean, that's like also the issue with kind of Christianity. Um, all you have to do to get saved in Christianity is just admit you're a sinner. Most people don't want to do that. You know, most people get offended by that. Even lots of people who claim to be Christians, even lots of Catholics and Orthodox and Anglicans. Um, I don't want to imply that's all there is. Lutherans and Presbyterians aren't much better. But yeah, basically, lots of people just don't want to admit that they're immoral that they're doing something immoral. People don't like to be confronted with the fact that something they thought was fine actually wasn't fine. I've never had that issue. I have a pretty great idea of what's the right thing to do in any given situation. My morality is actually like very much on point. I would say I almost always have a pretty good idea of what's the morally correct thing to do in a given situation. I just very, very, very frequently don't do that thing <laughs> because, because I don't feel like it. That's it. Like I, I'm, I'm blessed with the ability, I think, to almost always very quickly be able to recognize what's the right thing to do here. Um, but I'm cursed with the ability to also just think to myself, yeah, I don't feel like doing it though. Um, so yeah, like that's me. And to be honest, you know, I, I actually struggle to kind of deal with the reality that there are so many people out there who are so unwilling to recognize their own moral failings. And so I'm willing to recognize that, yeah, they do immoral stuff. Um, that's something I really struggle with because for me, it's just so easy. Like so many times somebody like wants to argue I've done something wrong and I'm like, yeah, I did. And I find it very strange. Therefore, when I argue with somebody who I think has very obviously done something wrong and they're like, no, I didn't. No, I would never. Me, I never do anything wrong. I'm perfect. And I was like, are you crazy? But yeah, like that's, and obviously something as like fundamental as literally what you've been putting in your mouth, like every day of your life, lots of people are just like, they just can't accept the fact that, um, that they're doing something immoral. They're just like, I can't, no, how can this have been immoral? It's what I was raised to do. It's what I've been doing all my life. I can't have been doing something immoral just habitually all my life without thinking about it. Well, they were. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what the solution is here. Um, well, I will say actually um, that I do think like there's this particular vegan tactic of like um, giving animals like names and personalities that like, you kind of see it of like... Um, I, I don't really know who's doing it, but like how, like people will like walk up to like, um, beef in the, um, uh, in like the shops and they'll like slap a sticker on it saying like, my name was Molly. I was a cow and I died. Um, I feel like that's a strategy that's very unlikely to work. And I think one of the reasons for that is that we already falsely give, um, animals personalities they lack in our media. Like I've always found that really strange that, um, like we have Bambi and it like gives animals personalities like deer personalities 
and they don't even have like basically animals don't have like personalities to the extent that they're portrayed as having in a lot of like children's media so we show children these films where like rabbits and deer and horses or whatever all have like and pigs all have personalities and like opinions and views and wishes and ambitions and hopes and dreams and then we expect them to eat meat and it's kind of like it's weird because it's almost like we're giving them like obviously these animals don't have the, that level of per I'm not suggesting animals don't have personalities at all but they don't have personalities to that extent you know like I'd, I wouldn't want to, like I would happily have a conversation with Bambi I wouldn't want to have a conversation with a deer um because yeah that's just it you know obviously there's a massive difference between the animals that are actually let's be honest anthropomorphic humans I guess kind of or at least like you know human brains in animal bodies um like in Bambi like, I was going to say Dumbo, but not really. Dumbo kind of isn't really necessarily that, like, intelligent. But let's say the crows in Dumbo, for example. You know, the crows in Dumbo talk. They have they have banter. They chat. They, like, say, hey, how's it going? It's me, the, the crow. Um, yeah, like, we, we give these animals personalities, and then we just, like, epically troll these kids. So, yeah, basically what I'm saying is we're just trolling kids by presenting them with worlds where... The killing of animals would obviously be very immoral because these animals have thoughts and feelings and personalities and we're lying to them that's not even true animals don't have at least to that level thoughts and feelings and personalities and then we kill the animals and expect them to eat it and it's like how do we what's the logic there but i do think what this does is it kind of like insulates people against like the idea of taking the notion of animals having personalities seriously because it's like if you're a kid and you're shown like bambi talking and chatting and hanging out and then i realize most kids don't eat venison so i don't know maybe this doesn't work probably would be better to talk about babe because lots of people eat pigs um so yeah like you see babe talking and chatting and hanging out and then you're expected to eat pigs if you then eat that pig you've kind of communicated to yourself like well even if pigs could talk and have personalities i'd, I'd still eat them <laughs> um which yeah maybe i think kind of means that if somebody then slaps a sticker on top of a pork chop saying hey i'm a pig i have a personality and all that stuff right? <laughs> okay don't care already been desensitized to that by um watching babe that's maybe a theory i have anyway um but i just wanted to say admittedly so far i haven't really like spoken that much about um vegan tactics but i do want to mention one thing real quick which is there's this aversion vegans have to like the meatless mondays approach and like the general uh like meat consumption reduction thing like lots of vegans are very all or nothing and i think that's very self-obviously or self-evidently stupid because like getting a hundred percent of people to reduce their meat con uh, consumption by half is equivalent to getting half of people to reduce their meat consumption by 100%. But vegans seem to have absolutely zero interest at all in, um, and even get like offended by the suggestion that that should be the goal, to get people to reduce their meat consumption by half. So that they'll be like, no, you know, we'll happily like campaign for every single person to reduce like their meat consumption by 100%, even though that hardly achieves any results. But we, yeah, no interest at all in what might actually achieve results, which is getting the majority of people to reduce their meat consumption more generally. Um, and yeah, I just think that's pretty obviously, in my opinion, a bad move from vegans. Um, like, yeah, basically, it would be far more effective to achieving their, their goals. There would be genuinely like far less um, harm of animals, harm, far less uh, environmental degradation if everybody reduce their meat consumption by half and yet vegans would much rather just sit there and try and campaign for a very tiny fraction of people to reduce their meat consumption by a hundred percent which again i think is particularly going to be ineffective when the majority of vegans seemingly don't actually like meat that much anyway and therefore i think don't fully appreciate just how unlikely it is that people who do like meat are going to reduce their meat consumption so okay Let's talk about why I like meat, because I want to really get across why I like meat, um, just so that this can be out there and we can all understand. Because I made a point of kind of stressing that I like meat, and obviously, you know, part of it's just about the flavor. But I want to talk about something else and something I think is significant. And I want to say, first of all, I don't drink. And um, 
the simple reason why I don't drink is because I don't like the sensation of being drunk. Uh, I realized that a while ago. Like I was, I was drinking and I was drunk, and then I thought, I don't like this. I don't like this feeling. And the thing is, though, I genuinely love the taste of alcoholic drinks. Like it's so good. Like I am in a very rare, I think, um, subset of people who would drink dramatically more alcohol if alcohol didn't get you drunk. If alcohol didn't get you drunk, I'd be like knocking back beers all the time because I love the taste of beer. I love the taste of wine. Um, you know, I love a gin and tonic. Um, alcohol is great. And to be honest, you know, like um, I've tried to get like non-alcoholic beers and they just don't taste right. You know, like they're, they're just not quite there. And I haven't sampled as many as I would like to. I've had, I think, a non-alcoholic Peroni. I think I've had, I think I was going to have a non-alcoholic San Miguel. I can't really remember. Um, San Miguel was my favorite. Back when I did drink, San Miguel was one of my favorite beers. I love a San Miguel. Um, which is funny because my name is Michael. But yeah, like I, I love the taste of drink, of, of alcohol. Um, but more than that, I miss the experience of drinking. You know, I want to be able to sit on like the, the decking of my back garden on a summer's night, watching the sunset, drinking a nice, cool, refreshing lager. Uh, I want to be able to like pair a fine red wine with, um, you know, like an appropriate meal, you know, a nice piece of like red meat or something, you know, something that just goes very well with red wine. Um, I want to be able to like drink mold wine and eggnog, eggnog at uh, Christmas time or uh, drink real ales at local British pubs, you know, like that's an aspect of like the culture of drinking. I think it's really cool. You know, you go to a local British pub, a lot of them will have their own kind of like house ales, I guess. Um, and, you know, that you get that experience and that, that variety. Um, I want to be able to appreciate like fine whiskey. You know, I watched, um, Binging with Babish, um, like go to like this, this whiskey tasting course thing. And I was watching, I was like, yeah, that's, that would be so cool just to be able to like actually experience that culture. I also don't drink coffee by the way. And that's another like culture I kind of, you know, I therefore, and again, you know, you can probably predict it's cause I don't like the experience of like f feeling wired from caffeine. Um, but, uh, yeah, like that's something where I'm like, oh, that seems like it would be really cool. Um, but yeah, I just, I like that idea of like, you know, really fancy like whiskey that's been like aged and just like all the kind of, all the feeling around it, all like the ambiance around like, oh, it's, it's been like aged in this wooden barrel, like oak and stuff like that. And like the idea of being able to like taste the particular flavors and all that kind of stuff. Um, and also, also, by the way, I also want to appreciate like the, um, various kind of breweries of major cities, um, especially in Europe. Uh, whenever you look at like trip advisors, you know, like the kind of um, different things you can do in a given like major city, breweries are always up there. They always make an appearance quite uh, high up. And I have actually gone to some brewery tours, even without drinking, because I, I find it interesting, because like I say, I like the culture, but it's always a bit disappointing to get to the end of it. And a lot of the time you get a free beer at the end of it, and I can't drink the free beer because <laughs> I don't want to get drunk. I, I'll like sip it. Um, you know, I'm happy to, but I just, I'm, I'm very cautious. I never want to get even like close to drunk. Um, I'll drink it, but I, I, yeah, don't want to get any kind of psychoactive effects from, uh, the alcohol at all. So I'll drink the smallest amount of it I can to kind of get a taste for it. But there's always kind of a game of chicken with myself where it's like my in appreciation and enjoyment of the flavor of the drink versus, um, the, potential, you know, risk of actually making myself feel even slightly drunk, which I'm not going to enjoy at all. Um, so, okay, why did I say all of that? Well, it's because I like the special occasion of eating meat, you know, I like the culture of eating meat. And, uh, you know, I like Sunday roasts, uh, you know, in, in the UK, it's very common to have a Sunday roast. Every Sunday, you get together and you just have like the meat and it goes in the oven and it cooks perfectly and then you get the roast potatoes and it's like, it all comes together. And you kind of, you know, it's like something you always do with your family. Um, but of course, you know, more specifically, I love Christmas dinner. And I love the Easter dinner, which is typically roast lamb. Um, uh, and like, yeah, like Christmas dinner is just so good. And it's so wonderful and so special to have like that kind of occasion and celebrate it. Um, you know, I want to also, you know, I kind of mentioned tourism with the drink. I want to be able to partake in like Wagyu beef in Japan or 
uh, barbecue in Texas, or to be honest, you know, yeah, even dog in China. You know, eating meat is a facet of the human experience, as is drinking alcohol. And uh, since I'm already compelled to cut myself off from one substantial uh, facet of the human experience, and I feel tremendously kind of forlorn in light of that, you know, like the fact that I can't drink alcohol is actually something that really I don't like. I genuinely really don't like it. Um, And because of that, I have absolutely no desire to cut myself off from another aspect of that. You know, it, it's bad enough knowing that I'm not going to be able to appreciate like the fine sake when I go to Japan. To know that I also won't be able to appreciate um, the, uh, you know, um, wagyu beef either. It's too much. Uh, when I went to Bruges a while ago, uh, for some reason, it seemed like there was a very popular kind of trend in Bruges, which was places that give you uh, the, uh, so there's a restaurant called Ribs and Beer, and it seemed to be like a common thing. It was like, all you can eat ribs and beer. And I went there, and I thought, it sucks that I can't get the full experience here, you know. Um, this is like, obviously, it, it's a thing in Bruges. It's something, it's an aspect of, like, the culture of Bruges. It's something I want to immerse myself in. But, uh, pretty obviously, you know, I can't, I can't drink the beer. So I just ate the ribs. But... The thing is, if I were to stop eating meat, then I wouldn't be able to do any of it. It would have just been it would have just been closed off to me, and that's what I don't like. I don't like this idea of closing yourself off to aspects of the human experience. To you know, like I want to experience the world, and part of experiencing the world, I think, yes, would extend to drinking alcohol in different parts of the world. But if not that, then definitely eating meat in different parts of the world. You know, I, I don't want to just feel like I'm cut off from all of these possible things I could be doing and exploring uh, because I want to experience as much of the world as I can. And I don't want to cut myself off from experiencing that part of the world. Um, and, you know, obviously I also, yeah, it matters me as well, like during the year. So it's not just, you know, all around the world. It's also all around the year, Thanksgiving, Christmas dinner, um, even like the idea, you know, I, I really like the idea of kind of, um, uh, pulled pork sandwiches with, uh, apple, uh, like, um, stewed apple in the, uh, in the autumn. It's just so good. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. I can't do Oktoberfest because I don't drink beer, but I could at least have a Brathwurst, you know, if, if I can't have a Brathwurst, I can't do anything. Um, and I want to kind of tell you the story of at Christmas. I think it's kind of a unique thing to my family. I don't know that this is like a common thing, but we have for Christmas breakfast, every Christmas day, we have uh, an English muffin with some smoked salmon kind of like, you know, folded down like on top of it, like a layer of smoked salmon layered on top. And then... You squeeze some lemon over the smoked salmon and a little bit of black pepper. And maybe the black pepper after what comes next, which is a poached egg. You have a poached egg on top of the salmon and then you crack some black pepper on it. And then you you cut into it and the yolk just pours out over the smoked salmon And, you know, like it kind of soaks up into the English muffin and the kind of richness of the yolk contrasts with the, um, uh, uh, like sourness, citrusness of the lemon and the acidity of the lemon. And then the salmon and like the smoked flavor of the salmon just provides this like fantastic, um, depth of flavor. And it is the nicest thing I eat. And I only have it that one time of year. I never have it any other time. Every Christmas morning I wake up and I have those two English muffins, layered smoked salmon on top, squeeze of lemon, poached egg, um, black pepper, slice into it, eat it. And I, I love it. 
I, I'm looking forward to it already. Like it's it's something that will make my year. It's something I look forward to. I think about it regularly throughout like the year. And I only have it that one time of year. And when I have it, I enjoy every second of eating it. Now, you'll notice, first of all, that this removes any doubt at all that I like animal products. That egg makes my day, you know, and you can now see how, like, when I read people say, who are vegan, say, oh, even when I ate meat, even before I was vegan, I still um, thought that eggs were gross. And I read that and I think, right, there's no chance I'm ever being vegan then. Like, if that's, if that's like a common vegan opinion, well, yeah, eggs obviously are gross. I'm never becoming vegan because when I eat that egg, every second of it makes me so happy. It fills me with such joy. Um, and also, of course, it just shows how, like, for me, you know, I, I like my food. I wonder to what extent vegans do like their food. Sometimes it seems like a lot of the time vegans, <laughs> this is going to be controversial. I feel like sometimes vegans are kind of lazy. I feel like a lot of the time vegans are people who don't really care about food. This is like my experience with some of the vegans I know. They're like the kind of people who literally just throw food together. Um, they're, they're just like, oh yeah, I just like, they're kind of like, you know, food is just fuel for them. It's just like, oh yeah, I just have like some beans and like salad and whatever else. Um, and it's, for me, food, like the cooking it, the preparing it, the eating it, the, the sharing uh, in it with other people, these are all part of the experience. And for me, food is a very important thing. And that's why, like, the idea, you know, when I say, and I guess the point I'm making here is when I say, like, oh, I'm not going to be vegan because I like meat. It's not just like a, huh, lol, bacon's epic. I don't really like bacon that much, to be honest. Bacon is actually one of the few things that I could just stop eating. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not like, huh, lol, bacon's great. For me, it's it's a much deeper thing than that. It's food is is one of the things I live for. And yeah, like meat's a big part of that. Um, it's something which brings me immeasurable joy and happiness and uh, like comfort. And you might say, okay, um, is it right for me to very obviously put my pleasure over morality? Because that's what I'm saying here. Let's not beat around the bush here. I'm saying I know veganism is moral but I like eating meat. Now, I make a point, I made a point there of stressing why it is I like eating meat. It's not just because, um, you know, I uh, I just think, mm, it's tasty. No, it, it's more than that. It's, yeah, it's like something which, and again, it's something which I always relate to my experience of having quit alcohol. Because having quit alcohol is a thing which I don't like. I don't like, for example, not being able to drink the champagne on New Year's. That's another thing which I don't like. Um, there are so many things I don't like about that, and it bothers me. And that's because food is a part of like my experience of life, but so is so is drink. And again, I care about, I enjoy the taste, I enjoy the flavor, I enjoy everything about it. And to cut myself off from that in another sense by uh, abstaining from meat, it, it's it's something which is so unthinkable to me that it's another reason why I say like, you know, I'm maybe even like the least likely person in the world to become. Um, uh, vegan. But you, yeah, you might say, okay, so yeah, sure, you really like meat. But at the end of the day, let's be honest, with you, you're still putting your pleasure over morality. And that's not the right thing to do. You don't do something immoral just because you like it. And I do want to point a few things out. The first thing is, of course, that me quitting meat, me becoming vegan would not achieve any results. Let's be 100% clear on that. I'm just one person, it won't achieve anything. So actually, um, it's not as if I'm. It's not as if people are suffering for my pleasure, or animals are suffering for my pleasure. Nobody's suffering for my pleasure, because if I if I deprive myself of that pleasure and didn't eat meat, so what? It wouldn't achieve anything. It's not as if like that one person, me, is going to make a difference to you know the suffering of animals and all that kind of stuff. And to drive this point home, I want to say this. If there were a uh, referendum to make veganism mandatory across the entire world, you know, the, the global world government comes together and says, we're having a referendum to make veganism mandatory, I would vote yes. I would vote yes, make it mandatory. And 
that is despite the fact that I love meat so much um knowing that this would achieve results I would vote for it you know if the whole world went vegan that would achieve huge results it would be an incredible step forward for humanity so I would recognize that actually yeah in that case my pleasure comes second so the point is if it if it actually is achieving results that are more moral versus my pleasure I'm choosing achieving results that are more moral but me just individually giving up meat or animal products more generally isn't going to achieve that or isn't going to achieve anything frankly and ultimately let's be real here um most people who are vegan the only thing they're getting out of it is their own sense of moral satisfaction the only thing they're getting out of it is the sense that they're moral the sense that they're not participating in this bad industry and to be honest i genuinely think basically they are valuing the pleasure they get out of knowing that they are more moral over the pleasure they get from eating meat i think that would cohere with the fact that um that most of them don't seem to like meat that much so for them it's like well it's the pleasure of eating meat which i don't really even like that much versus the pleasure of knowing that i'm being more moral the the moral self satisfaction of being like i'm a vegan which i genuinely no judgment um but i would yeah genuinely argue that actually neither of us are achieving results we're both just doing what brings us the most pleasure the pleasure that you as a vegan get from despite not actually achieving anything by being vegan just knowing that you are morally superior versus the pleasure i get of also not achieving anything knowing that i'm doing the morally inferior thing but the huge amount of pleasure i get from my consumption of animal products um and this would also go here with the fact that like i say most vegans seem to have very little interest in people reducing their intake of animal products even though that would achieve huge results um because they only want people to become fully vegan they have this idea that being fully vegan is the only thing that matters it's the only thing that makes you a more moral person and that therefore they even though they could achieve results naturally like make life better for so many animals if they just advocated for people reducing their meat consumption generally they don't do that they have no interest in it now i will just touch on kind of like my own personal sort of meat eating habits in light of you know my recognition of kind of the the morality of veganism uh, in contrast to the morality of eating meat um and first of all for me yeah like um i already said that i think sometimes you can't taste the presence of meat and in those instances i actually do try to avoid eating meat so for example with um uh chilies chili con carne um i don't think it needs to be chili con carne because i don't actually think the meat's bringing that much to the table uh, and therefore and you know i personally love beans so i'm very happy to have an incredibly bean forward chili um and i enjoy that i also think i'd be quite happy to you know like substitute in lentils or, or you know um uh even that kind of corn mince which is like kind of fake mince but it's like designed to taste like mince but again the thing is like obviously if it was you know i i don't want to eat some kind of like fake made up steak but like mince is just kind of mushed up anyway you know like genuinely it's mostly let's be honest texture um and i think the texture of beef mince isn't that hard to imitate so yeah i'm very happy in that context to be like yeah i shouldn't eat meat um i'm happy to make that be you know to to have those meatless monday meals um and i also uh you know generally just eat incredibly healthy when it comes to my consumption of vegetables um and you know i should also stress that it's worth noting i kind of already mentioned i'm not that into the whole like mm, bacon's epic thing it's not as if i've got some kind of toxic masculinity inclining me against the idea of um eating uh like non meat options uh, ultimately i'm perfectly happy to not eat meat um and i don't yeah it doesn't doesn't threaten my masculinity in any way so i'm not like a complete loser about it who's just like i need to eat meat if it's not meat it's not a meal um which is like the attitude of some men i know and i think it's <laughs> i probably shouldn't say that uh um i don't mind saying that word but i think some people get offended by it so i'll just say um i think it's stupid there we go that's much better um yeah basically i think that it's dumb to be like oh, i just want to eat meat all the time i don't want to eat meat all the time i want to eat meat when i know i'm going to appreciate it and to be honest actually you'll notice that one of the points i make of stressing there is that for me meat's like a special occasion i like it being a special occasion and to be honest yeah i actually find like the idea of just like 
eating meat every single day, I think it kind of takes the fun, the pleasure out of eating meat. So yeah, I personally think that actually meat should be kind of a special occasion and a thing to be celebrated. Um, you know, like alcohol too. Obviously, you know, I, I miss the like very sp- specific occasions of kind of really enjoying alcohol, but I certainly, you know, don't want to just um, be like drinking alcohol all the time, you know, binge drinking or anything like that habitually. I also uh, kind of already said when I mentioned like the idea of eating dogs in China, I don't think that it's um, logical or sensible to be fussy about like the kind of animal. Obviously, like there are some people who genuinely do see, and I can't even believe this because it's just so obviously inconsistent. People will be like, oh, eating dogs is immoral. And it's like, no, it's not. It's not any more immoral than eating any other kind of animal. Um, Yeah, like for me personally, yeah, my attitude is, well, I'm not going to judge, you know, seeing as I am willing to eat meat. Um, I'm not going to judge any culture for whatever meat they eat, whether it's dogs or cats or anything else I might not actually enjoy. You know, personally, I find like seeing dogs like at like, you know, dog meat, I find it kind of off-putting to look at. But actually, I would still eat it because I'd be like, yeah, I want to participate in these other kind of countries and what they've got going on. Um, And uh, I also think that um, you should only eat meat if you would be uh, willing to kill an animal. Um, I do think kind of like I, I get uncomfortable with the idea of like people who are willing to participate in the kind of benefits of this industry that relies on killing animals when they themselves would not be morally willing to kill an animal. I don't really like that. Um, I mean, I kind of like, I'm, I'm not saying like I'm compl- I really hate that or think it's completely objectionable. But yeah, when I see people who are like, oh, I, I love eating meat. Yeah, I'd happily eat meat every single day. But I don't ever want to kill an animal. Um, you know, the idea of, of killing an animal is just, just horrendous to me. And I'm like, well, how can you, you know, eat meat and enjoy eating meat while admitting that you would not be able to do the thing that's necessary to do to actually have that meat. Um, and yeah, me personally, I would uh, be um, morally very willing to kill an animal. I should stress that uh, I think there's some things where like different people have like different degrees to which they find, th- find things gross. I find blood and gore gross. Um, I wouldn't want to be a butcher, for example. Obviously, like butchering is a thing that's necessary for me to get the food to, you know, my table. But the point is, in that case, it's not like a moral thing. It's not like I have a moral aversion to butchering. I just find it gross. Um, So yeah, I do not have a moral aversion to killing animals because I enjoy the food that comes from animals being killed. Um, Rather, or, you know, saying I don't have a moral aversion, what I mean is I would be willing to overlook any moral aversion I have because I'd recognize that in order to eat the meat that I want to eat, uh, I would need to kill the animals, um, you know, and that's, yeah, kind of, a, and I, you know, I think about like other things like kind of, um, I also think, for example, if you're going to say support like the death penalty, which I don't think you should, but if you did support the death penalty, I would say you should be able to say that you would be willing to kill another person. If you're just saying you want the agents of the state to kill another person, but you yourself would not be able to do it. I think that's kind of like a bit rubbish personally. So anyway, that's just kind of like my own personal philosophy about eating meat. Uh, I try to reduce it. I'm not fussy about it. And yes, uh, I, you know, I'm, I refuse to just be somebody who's like enjoying the benefits of like the meat industry while um, like being like, oh, but I, I would never kill an animal myself. Uh, no, if you know, if I needed to, I would kill an animal. Um, and you know, be like, yes, this is this is the thing I should be doing, considering the fact that I'm enjoying the uh, products that come from animals being killed. Um, but yeah, I do want to talk finally about society and meat eating. And uh, if you um, don't know, this would be a good opportunity to refresh yourself with my general kind of utopian society. The two things which I think really matter are that I believe in people living in very dense kind of city blocks um, and urban environments centered around restaurants where people would go and eat food prepared um, by professional chefs and the private kitchen would be abolished. You can find my video on ab- abolishing the private kitchen. Um, and yeah, that will kind of fill you in. But um, uh, the question you could ask correctly is, do I think society should go fully vegan? Um, or do I think meat eating can work in society morally? I said that if there were a referendum, I would vote 
for society to become fully vegan. But the point is there, it's because it's veganism versus our current society. And I think veganism is better than our current society. Thing is, there's a lot of things I think that are better than our current society. What about my perfect society? Would my perfect society be fully vegan? Um, and to answer that, I think the first question to ask is like, is eating meat 100% immoral? And to that, I would like to point out that I don't really necessarily buy into this idea that killing animals is 100% immoral in itself. And there's a few reasons for that. The first one is that animals don't feel any existential dread at being killed, I don't think. Um, I'm not saying that animals don't like have a general aversion to dying. Like, obviously, if an animal is confronted with something which it knows will kill it, it will kind of retreat from it. But the point is, if you kept a bunch of humans in, like, a camp, for example, and they knew they were going to die, they knew their purpose being there was that they would die, that would be incredibly cruel. That would be very immoral, because you are keeping... I mean, that's like psychological torture. Uh, the reality is that I could, you know... Uh, keep an animal somewhere and say to that animal every day, you are going to die. And it's not going to affect the animal at all. The animal is not going to have any any idea what I'm saying. Um, I don't think most animals live their life plagued by the fear of death in the way that humans do. And for that simple reason, I don't think it's as immoral to kill an animal as it is to kill a human. Animals simply, I don't think, are, like I say, cognizant of their own mortality in the way humans are. Um, now, I do think, of course, in this regard, that you shouldn't just um, kill animals in front of other animals. I think that would cause them distress. But you could treat an animal nice, treat an animal kind, um, have an animal in a nice little community, and then, after a while, you take them to a room, and they die, and that's it. Um, and basically, the point is, I don't think the animal would feel any existential dread in that whole thing, uh, whereas I imagine humans would. Humans would kind of maybe work out what was going on, and it would <laughs> really stress them out. I think animals are broadly would be unharmed in that situation. I don't think any animal would experience um, conscious harm as a result of that. Um, and also, it's worth noting that um, you have to consider the potential for what an animal can do. The reality is, and I hate to say it, but animals just exist to live and sleep and have sex and reproduce and eat and defecate and all that kind of stuff. Like, animals are just going through the motions of life. Animals don't have dreams, they don't have hopes, they don't have fantastic, glorious aspirations. No. An animal has, like, look, there are millions of animals out there in the wild that are free to do anything they want. And you know what? What they're doing is just living their life. That's it. All they're doing is just going out and eating and sleeping and hunting and trying not to get killed and all that kind of stuff. Like, they're not out there writing great works of fiction. They're not like doing all of these wonderful, incredible things. And that's why killing a human is a horrible, horrendous thing to do, because human beings are capable of immeasurable pleasure by pursuing all of their varied interests and aspirations. Animals aren't. Let's be real here. They're not. You're not, if you kill an animal, um, you aren't uh, depriving it of an incredibly fulfilling life down the line. The idea of like animals being fulfilled, I think, is frankly complete nonsense. We're not expecting animals to get self-actualized by uh, realizing, you know, all of the pleasures they can have in life. No, an animal who just is able to live its life reasonably comfortably and then die is a happy animal, uh, and I don't think you have in any way treated that animal immorally. Um, and uh, I do think, obviously, that you could consider these factors in reckoning some human lives as more valuable than others. I think this should be an uncontroversial thing to say. I think, to be honest, if you're one of those people who, like, you're told that, you know, you, you're in a situation where you can only save one human being, you know, it's a classic moral hypothetical, you can only save one human being, I personally think, like, the attitude of, well, I wouldn't make a choice, I think there's no choice that can be made, is kind of dumb. I think the reality is that there is information of which you can be made aware, which should make one of these um, humans more worth saving than another person. So I actually do think that in a strictly utilitarian sense, uh, human beings and human life and the value of human life is on a spectrum from somebody who has like incredible and measurable potential to do something wonderful for somebody who's actually not really got any chance of um, 
doing something fantastic and wonderful with their life. Of course, if given the choice and you know this, you should save the person, you know, and people talk about like, for example, people who have families, like, should you um, keep alive somebody who's got like a family who loves them and blah, blah, blah. Like, let's say there's like two 40 year old men. One of them has a family who loves them and cares about them and a job that's great. The other person has no family, uh, nobody who really cares about them, all that kind of stuff. In as far as I'm concerned, if you just say, no, I'm just going to, you know, I, I'm not going to make any choice, just kill whichever one I have no choice to make there. I think you're actually being immoral by saying that. I think that the moral decision is to choose the person who clearly has much more to live for in their life. Um, that's my take. But so like, because that's the thing, people might say, well, you know, you're talking about like potential and, you know, um, uh, stuff like that. Wouldn't that imply that like some human beings? And my answer is yes. But I also think, of course, because this is when people might say, well, what about if you are you suggesting that people who have like no value in their life should just be herded off into camps? And uh, no, the reality is that there is a point at which you just have to kind of um, uh, in a I'm actually trying to remember the word for what um, this particular kind of um, uh, moral position is. It will probably come to me later, but it's not coming to me right now. Um, so basically, um, essentially just declare kind of arbitrarily that human life is just on some level intrinsically valuable and human life matters um, more than other life. Um, I think, yeah, it kind of has to just be arbitrarily asserted at some point. Now, in some sense, you could declare just in like the stricter sense that, well, any creature being alive rather than dead is more moral. Like, you know, if somebody walks up to you and says, should this pig be alive or dead? Then if you say, oh, the pig should be dead, that's kind of like clearly alive is the more moral choice. But like, the thing is, sure but it's a pretty kind of like it, it's i think that's just like a quite rudimentary value to a pig's life like of course a pig's life is worth more than nothing of course it's better for a pig to be alive than not be alive but does that is that the same thing as saying like that it is a significant immorality to end a pig's life i don't really know i don't really think so because i think ultimately a pig's life doesn't actually have that much value in terms of what they could achieve in life or what it is that um, life would even mean to them. I don't think a pig has a concept of life meaning particularly much to them. Uh, and I should also point out again that you also end up with, in this sense, kind of like a weird question of like, well, if a pig being alive is better than a pig being dead, well, obviously it's not as if like just as many pigs, in fact, far more pigs will be alive with the meat industry or, you know, like with when human beings are breeding meat for food. Um, whereas of course a huge number of pigs would die if human beings weren't breeding pigs for food, because of course breeding, you know, human beings breeding animals for food has dramatically increased the number of animals there are. So obviously I'm not suggesting that undoes like the immorality of if those animals are treated particularly cruelly, but if your only argument, and this is the key point, if your only argument is that an animal being alive is better than an animal being dead, then more animals are alive if we're breeding animals for food. Now the point is, if the killing of animals is not intrinsically immoral in itself, then the only objection would be with any of the suffering an animal might endure in their life under the current existing meat industry or, or in the meat industry. So basically, if you can guarantee that the animal will be happy throughout their life, then that you kill them at the end of that life isn't really a moral issue. Now, I am going to return back to the fact that I mentioned we should have abolished private kitchens. And I do think that in my perfect society, uh, meat options would be limited. Um, we should have far more vegan options. And frequently, the only options on the menu should be vegan options. Uh, I think that, yeah, my perfect society would be a very vegan society. Lots of meat-free options, lots of options using kind of um, artificial meat. You know, I think there's limitations to how convincing artificial meat will be able to be. But yeah, I think basically my own personal philosophy about like, for example, um, you know, like things where you're basically just having like a mush, like, uh, you know, um, chili con carne and spaghetti bolognese to some extent. Um, yeah, where you're kind of just having like a, a mush of just minced meat. I don't think there's any issue with replacing that with something that would just kind of mimic the texture and flavor, which I think you could probably do through artificial means. So yeah, I think that it's perfectly reasonable to think that the majority of times, actually, where people might currently be eating meat, they could not be eating meat in my ideal society. 
Um, but let's talk about when it comes to actually eating meat. You know, uh, the first thing I think that I would put front and center is kind of environmental concerns. But I think when you consider environmental concerns to an extent, animal welfare comes along with that. So um, I've mentioned before that, yeah, people should live in kind of like these big housing blocks. And I think that on top of every single one of these housing blocks should be chicken coops, just coops for chickens. And, you know, there should be you know, one person who lives in that housing block and their job is to go up and take care of the chickens. Um, and one of the reasons for this is because it would mean that you would have so much space for chickens, you know, because you wouldn't have to have chickens all crowded together in these factory farms. Every single, like, housing block would have some chickens on top of them. And these chickens could be spread out. They could have space. They could, you know, you could have grass on top of these housing blocks. Um, these chickens could be very happy. And the reality is that, again, by making it so that people are living in more dense conditions, and I think that's a very reasonable thing for, for human beings to live in these kind of like dense areas. Um, obviously that, you know, I mean, one of the reasons why I advocate for people living kind of more densely and close together is it allows you to have um, close communities while also not having to worry about things like um, needing to drive a car everywhere. Obviously somewhere like LA, where it's all very spread out, everyone has to drive a car everywhere is something which I'm fundamentally opposed to. Um, but yeah, like I think people should live closer together, which frees up space for other stuff. And uh, yeah, of course, I think interwoven in a way with uh, the space humans have created for themselves should be space for chickens. And therefore you can have a huge number of chickens, but spread out. Not, And I don't think we should ever have chickens in like factory farms, um, anything like that. Chickens should be able to live in, you know, roughly, or indeed, in fact, exactly maybe, the kind of spaces they might expect to live when they're kind of out in the wild. Um, very happy chickens. And also, you know, the fact that people will live uh, so close together means that I think around these like dense cities, you should have rings, which are reserved for agriculture. And, for, you know, you should have obviously vegetables should be the main thing. Uh, huge kind of farming areas outside of each city for um, vegetables. And obviously those vegetables will then be transported to the um, restaurants in the center of different communities. But also, uh, kind of outside of that, should be an area for uh, especially pigs. Um, because I mentioned before how pigs, I think, are very good for recycling food. They eat lots of scraps. They're very happy to eat scraps, as far as I can tell. Um, so I think that should be kind of part of like recycling. So obviously, one of the things I mentioned when I was talking about restaurants and the benefits of kind of abolishing private kitchens is reducing food waste. Because any food that is wasted won't be wasted because it can be correctly handled. It can be um, you know, put on big trucks, taken back to the farms, where it can either be composted or indeed, yes, given to pigs. And I think, yeah, pigs are a great way to um, use up and, and kind of recycle um, the uh, the scraps and stuff like that. So again, that's an example of how I think pigs and humans could be working symbiotically. So could um, chickens and humans. And also, I've uh, mentioned that I think people should be living very dense. I've kind of stressed that several times. And I think that outside of these dense urban areas, you should have much of the UK just become rewilded. I don't know if that's exactly the term, but basically allowed to kind of grow out and um, basically get to a point of sort of natural wilderness. Um, you know, like, and of course, I have loads of deer have loads of wild boars, basically have, yeah, the, the animals that used to be wild to the UK living out there again. And what I believe is that when it comes to the majority of red meat human beings eat, it should be attained by hunting. Human beings should go out and be like, okay, you know, we're not going to farm cattle out on these, you know, big ranches. We're going to, you know, to meet this huge meat consumption that people have. No, instead, we're going to go out and hunt for animals and that's going to be how we meet people's, you know, desires for the consumption of meat. And because of that, you know, people's consumption of meat would have to be significantly reduced. Um, and first of all, I want to you know, say some quick things on that, which is firstly that uh, I think that in terms of suffering during the lives of animals, which, like I say, is the main concern, how are these animals doing during their life? This is pretty unobjectionable. Like these animals will get to live completely wildly. There's no, yeah, these animals will get to live the happy uh, well, not necessarily happy, to be honest, because they might actually, you know, there might be genuine uh, kind of concerns out there. But the point is a life that they would be living even if the meat industry didn't exist. You know, as far as these animals are concerned, 
for their entire lives, it will be as if the meat industry didn't exist. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's, that should be, you know, obviously that's what vegans want, right? Animals to live as if the meat industry didn't exist. Now, I also would like to stress that, um, uh, I do kind of buy into this idea that there is something sort of spiritual about hunting. You know, I know Joe Rogan said that he thought like hunting was this kind of spiritual thing. And I think, you know, obviously I don't really believe in spirituality because I'm kind of a Christian and Christianity is kind of like about as far away from spirituality as you can get. Uh, in fact, I think like atheists could, you could have a spiritual atheist before you can have a spiritual Christian because at least with atheism, spirituality is like an option. You can believe in like this idea of like magical like spirits all coming together and all that kind of stuff. Whereas of course in Christianity, that's just not a thing. You know, um, it, it, it's a very materialist religion. But um, yeah, basically um, I kind of believe in something like spirituality, like this general kind of sense of like um, connecting to the natural way of living. And I think there's there's something to be said to that, connecting to the natural way of living. And of course, the natural way of living is you go out and you hunt for food. And I think that that's something, you know, I don't think it's, I think it's kind of deleterious to the human condition that we have these living creatures that we just keep in farms and then we just kill them so we can feed ourselves. I think actually um, having this idea of, you know, these are living creatures that go out and we go out and we hunt. Um, you know, we we assume that role and we kill these creatures and then we eat them. You know, I think there is something more kind of natural about that and more kind of spiritually fulfilling. And also, I think this is something which should be done as a community. And I think there should be incredibly high penalties for anybody who goes out and hunts for animals uh, as an individual. Because, um, obviously, I think, for one thing, yeah, like I say, the, the community aspect of it, I think, will um, enhance the kind of spirituality of it. Like, it should be, you know, people will be like, okay, we're going to go out on a hunt. and We're going to go look out and it should be kind of a... um you know, something which to some extent almost everybody's expected to do because, you know, again, I don't think that people should be just eating meat and enjoying eating meat without actually participating in the getting of meat, the collecting of meat, the hunting of meat. Um, and the other thing is, of course, by doing it collectively, it allows it to be regulated. You know, people should have, you know, people should have an idea of how much, how many animals there are out there, um, what effects human hunting is having. And then, in response to that, decide how much hunting is going to be done in a given period. In a given period, but yeah, the point is that obviously the amount of food that's got out of this is not going to be a huge amount. It should be enough so that everybody can have some, but not everybody's going to have all of it. You know, um, I should point out in the UK this works especially well because the UK doesn't have any natural predators here, um, and I actually don't. Sorry, I should stress this. I don't think we should reintroduce like wolves and bears to the UK. I don't think there's any point in that. Um, but yeah, with that said. Uh, I do think that um, it can allow for there to be huge numbers of like different kind of herbivores who human beings can go out or which human beings can go out and hunt and eat. Um, now, you could point out that actually uh, the killing of the animals itself might be more traumatic than if they were simply, you know, like slaughtered in the way that they kind of are now, like obviously with the kind of stun gun just... Um, whereas in this case, you know, maybe they'll get shot in the leg and stagger around and then eventually like bleed out. And that might be a less pleasant death for the animal. Um, that's possible. However, again, I do think that actually their life will be pretty unobjectionable. So it's kind of like there, it's sort of a case of pick your poison. Um, but that's kind of, to me, that's sort of when I imagine like a, my perfect society and how would it exist? It would kind of be, yeah, like, um, chicken coops on top of the houses people go out and they take care of those chickens they, you know da, 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 da. Uh, and you know when the time comes when the chickens are at a certain age where like there's some decent meat on them you just go da, da, da. I, don't know. I don't know how how you should kill a chicken but however it's like the best way to kill a chicken kill it that way um and then pigs yeah pigs you know pigs having fun oh, nom, 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 nom. Oh, so happy rolling around having so much fun and then eventually you get to a point where you say okay piggy come on let's go da, 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 da. and then you take them to a place and then you kill the pig and again it's not like some horrendous betrayal. This is an animal. It's not an animal which is capable of some like deep, meaningful sense of like life having value or something. It's not as the animal is, oh, no, there's so many things I didn't do. No, it's, it's an animal. Um, and uh, I do want to talk just very briefly. Oh, sorry, I should just finish and say, and obviously when it comes to other things like wild boar, um, like uh, deer, like whatever else, um, you go out and you hunt. Kill it. Take it home. Look, 
who all partake in the fruits of the hunt. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it spiritual? Isn't it uh, something to behold? Um, I want to talk about animal products briefly. So the first thing I'll say about um, animal products is pretty obvious thing. You don't actually have to kill the animal. Um, duh, which is nice. Um, so like, even if you like, in this case, it's kind of like, there's almost no objection. Cause it's like, if the animal's treated fine during their life and then they don't even get killed, what's the issue? Um, and in this case, I think like the spirituality thing is even kind of like, it's more pronounced because it's like, there's such a pure relationship where like, you know, for example, we would have sheep, you know, and the sheep would be on the outskirts of the town again. And, um, you would like harvest their wool and then, you know, the humans wear the wool. It's like this nice symbiotic relationship. And it's frankly, I would think quite beautiful. Indeed, actually, I looked up like criticisms of like the wool industry because I was kind of thinking like, is there even a problem with wearing wool? And um, it turns out that the only issue with the wool industry is with the scale of the wool industry. It doesn't cause sheep any harm at all, actually being sheared or anything like that. But the scale of it means that there are like certain practices which are kind of like gross, like, you know, sheep get neglected, sheep don't get taken care of, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's kind of it. Like ultimately the main objection comes down to like the scale of the industry, the capitalist industry causes issues. And that's why I think most of the time is what vegans are actually objecting to, the mass scale of capitalist industry. And that's something which obviously I don't think we should have. You know, we should have, I mean, we should have shepherds, to be honest, like, you know, people who love their sheep, who take care of their sheep. And of course, in this case, it's even easier because like I say, the sheep don't even need to, um, uh, don't even need to be killed. Now, sure, maybe we would still kill lamb. Well, you know, maybe you don't like the idea, but yeah, I think it probably work because the reality is like sheep probably produce like, if we didn't kill some of the lamb, then we'd have way too many sheep. So it kind of works out. Uh, but yeah, basically lovely sheep taken care of, you know, they, they do it. And then, you know, people get the wool and they make it and stuff and then you wear it. And it's just, it's so, it's so nice to have like, you know, the sheep, they're happy. They're getting taken care of. The, um, uh, humans are happy. They're getting the wool. Um, you know, the, the animal, the, the shepherds who work with the sheep are getting to spend time with these, these animals who presumably they're quite fond of. There's no like gross, um, you know, evil. And on the subject of kind of gross evil, um, yeah, I think like we should still have dairy cows, you know, dairy cows should still be a thing. They should still be kind of taken care of. They should still exist. Um, but again, it shouldn't be on this kind of evil industrial capitalist scale. Rather, you should go back to kind of a simpler time. of like you have a few cows, you have a few people take care of the cows. Um, there's like this relationship there. There's a friendship there. There's, you know, these aren't animals just shoved onto like these massive kind of crates or like, you know, being treated like complete crap. Um, and there should be like the people who work in these industries should love these animals and there shouldn't be any issue with them loving the, the animals. You know, like it should not, there should be nothing which these people feel themselves having to do, which would contradict their love for these animals. And um, if there is something you know, maybe, for example, in the interest of like increasing efficiency, which actually causes suffering to the animals, then that's a sign we shouldn't do that thing. Um, there should be no contradiction between somebody being like, I, I love this animal, I take care of this animal, and I get something from this animal. I don't think there's an issue there. Um, and I would just say briefly on the um, chicken eggs thing, uh, uh, some of the coops I think should be for chickens, like for meat, some of the coops I think should be for chickens that lay eggs, because I understand they're actually slightly different breeds. Um, and I do think actually that... Um, the, the killing of uh, male chicks is going to happen. And I just wanted to sell that because, yeah, I think it's, it is. But it's a good example of how um, like cuteness kind of overrides mor morality because um, humanely killing male chicks is easily the most morally neutral aspect of the entire like animal products industry, uh, which is funny because, okay, so the reason it's like the most um, uh, neutral is because like I say, the worst thing about the animal products industry is the um, suffering animals endure during their lives, right? Obviously, like, I don't think it's really an issue when the animals actually die. I mean, even if it's like a slight issue, it's clearly it doesn't compare to the suffering animals experience during their lives. Um, but the male chicks hardly experience any suffering at all. So it's actually, it's not really a massive issue. You know, like, um, ultimately, what happens in the UK is that the chicks are sexed and the male chicks get put in like a tray and then the tray is taken to a, um, a place where then it's kind of like gassed um, with some kind of gas. 
basically a gas that makes the chicks go to sleep, asphyxiate them, they die. Again, not a particularly uh, suffering death. You know, they just kind of... I mean, you know, unless you're going to say that you suffer tremendously when you get like um, uh, your um, wisdom teeth taken out or something. The reality is, yeah, they sleep and then that's it, they're done. So that that's the rule in the UK. I know that in other countries, it's horrible. Like uh, male chicks are ground up while they're alive. Um, they're like suffocated in batches of water. They're crushed. They're all these other horrible things. Of course, that shouldn't happen. Why does this happen? Because of well, in that case, to be honest, it's not even because of scale. It's just because people genuinely don't care, and that's gross. But the point is that if the animals are killed humanely, then a male chick dying in the egg industry is hardly even an issue at all. I don't lose a single like fraction of sleep over that. Um, but the funny thing is, I think in many ways, it is an example of how like it's more effective because people hear about that and they think, oh, those poor male chickies, isn't it sad? The funny thing is, like, yeah, those male chickies aren't suffering at all. Those male chickies are getting the easy way out. Like people don't care about the adult hens that are forced into these horrible like um, conditions where they like you know battery uh, farms and they you know have to get all these eggs and work and stuff and they're like treated horribly and they just suffer tremendously. People don't seem to care about that, but then they see these like male chicks get killed and they think, oh, the cute baby's getting killed, and it's like, yeah, but like that's not the problem. The male chicks getting killed is fine. And to be honest, yeah, the male chicks like, you know, grind them up and turn them into dog food, which I think is what usually happens. Um, like I'm too rational for these concerns. Um, like my, I mean, yeah, like I say, my morality is about like what makes sense and the actual kind of implications of things. Oh, somebody's just started playing the piano. Isn't that interesting timing? Cause I am basically just done. So I'm just going to kind of power through the piano being played. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, the the male chicks the egg industry as far as i'm concerned is fine you know male chicks die but that's actually not that morally much of an issue the rest of the um, female chickens should be treated kindly taken care of it should all be very lovely so i think at the end of that massive video a conclusion is kind of necessary so here's my conclusion the current animal products industry is bad but one person's individual actions aren't going to solve anything i like animal products uh, I think that they are tasty, and uh, I don't think it's worth going vegan when all I'd get out of going vegan is uh, my own personal sense of self-satisfaction at knowing that I'm more moral. Uh, and either way, it's kind of selfish then, isn't it? It's either I get the personal sense of being like, oh, I'm more moral, or I get to enjoy life and enjoy food. Either way, I'm not like being more moral. So either way, I'm not actually changing anything. I'm not actually improving anything for the animals. And finally, on the subject of improving things for the animals, I personally think that my preference for a kind of... um anti-consumerist, collectivist, agrarian, quasi-primitivist um, society would be conducive to a system where animal products are used to meet human ends uh, in a way that I consider to be kind of like sufficiently humanitarian and humane. Basically, I don't think the animals would suffer. I think the animals would be fine. I think human beings would get something out of it. And I very much think everybody would be happy. And that's why uh, I'm personally not going to go vegan, and I don't really think it's 100% necessary for society to go vegan, but certainly we do need to dramatically restructure the economy uh, as it presently exists to make things better for everyone. My uh, battery light was flashing at the end there, so I'm just going to end now so I don't have to go, uh, you know, like get cut off and then go recharge it and then come back and just record like the last second. So bye!